Hello silver friends, this is Jolie from Quicksilver Hair, where I normally talk all things silver hair, but I also have a series on my channel for embracing slower fashion, and we're going to get back into that today. I want to talk about the challenge points that come along with changing your mindset and shopping slower and sustainable. Some of those challenges include selection, necessity, quality, and the longevity of those garments. I have tried to put this in a way that makes sense and is helpful to you and hopefully I have succeeded at that. First off, selection can be a major challenge point. You're not always going to find what you need in these categories because sustainable fashion, while it is a growing and growing rapidly category of fashion, it's not necessarily in a place where it can cover all the bases yet. So I have found that there are several things when it comes to selection that I have struggled with, and I thought I would share those with you. The first one is the clothing is often gender neutral or unisex. While that's fine, that means that some things aren't going to fit well for women and that they aren't going to necessarily be what you need, especially for things like work or dressy occasions. Another issue I found was that the sizes aren't always inclusive. I need inclusive sizing. I am not a small woman and I found right off the bat that some of these brands, well, some are very inclusive, some of them are not at all and that they stop their sizing at extra large and that the sizes run small. So it's very difficult in some of them to find what you need. I hope that that's something that changes over time. Another issue I found was the color palettes can be very limited and neutral. This can create an issue for you if you follow a season's color palette like I do. Um, I found it very difficult very quickly to find things that weren't black, charcoal, white, camel, beige, and those are colors that I don't wear at all, so that even limits it even more. I'm hoping this is also something that changes within sustainable fashion, so it is pushing me more to slower fashion categories just so I can find more colors. I also noticed that a lot of the brands are targeting to a younger demographic. Now, I don't adhere to you need to be a certain age to wear a certain thing or anything like that. I don't care. If you like short shorts, wear short shorts. If you like maxi skirts, wear maxi skirts. It's, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is that the brands are specifically targeting what younger buyers are wanting. So it can be a little bit trendier or it can be a little bit more something that they're going to wear temporarily where we're looking for something that we can wear forever. Often the brands are also more casual and while I am a casual person and I like casual clothing, that can become an issue when you need to have something that is dressier. And then when you get into the dressier, slower and sustainable fashion, it can get very expensive very quickly. So this is where selection moves into necessity. When you can't find certain things that you absolutely need, it can become a challenge. The major buying compromises for me have been jeans, shoes, and bras. These are areas where I had to bend the rules. Um, for me, I needed to have affordable jeans that fit I am a jeans girl. I like jeans, I don't like slacks, and I don't like skirts. I don't wear skirts very often. I have a handful of them, but mostly I wear jeans. And for me, they need to fit my body. And you know, I think that's probably true for everybody. We all want that perfect pair of jeans that fit perfectly. And what I noticed in the sustainable category of jeans is they can get really expensive. And by really expensive, I mean $250 for a pair of jeans. And okay, if they're the perfect jeans and you are gonna wear them forever, maybe that's affordable, but for the most of us, that is not something that's attainable or affordable. The jeans that I specifically like are silver and cut from the cloth. Levi's brand is actually considered a sustainable brand. However, I think that's not across their whole brand because they do sell a less expensive um, quality product in Target and Walmart, and I think it's on Amazon also, that is um, a cheaper point of their line. So if you like Levi's, they do have sustainable jeans in their line. Next up would be supportive shoes. I will not compromise on shoes. My shoes have to support me. 
I have bad knees and I've had them since I was a child. And I have learned that the better my shoes are, the better my legs and my knees feel and my feet now. So fortunately, I love Birkenstocks. Birkenstocks are not considered a sustainable brand. However, I believe they are one of the very first companies I ever became aware of that actually do follow a sustainable model of fashion. They build their shoes to last you for a very long time and you can have them rebuilt. So for me, Birkenstock seems like a good choice. I also like Taos brand shoes for their support. Again, not a sustainable brand, probably a slower brand and definitely not a fast fashion, but a point where I had to go, I need this brand of shoes because this is what works for me. Tennis shoes have become a major issue for me. I don't know if anybody else has noticed this, but they don't last anymore. They seem to break down really quickly, which is not following any version of sustainable fashion because they aren't lasting. And I heard once that tennis shoes last only about 150 miles. And if you're doing steps and you're walking a lot, they're not gonna last very long at all. The next point of necessity for me is a good supportive comfortable bra. I have rib issues and if a bra is not comfortable, I'm not comfortable and then I am miserable. So it is something that I have to find what works for me. I prefer unlined, I prefer wired and wired bras are just not in the sustainable category. Not at least that I have found. It is something that I think a lot of people have moved away from but there are some of us who still prefer that type of support and I guess I'm old school in that way. I did find an organic cotton bra from La Mystery, and it's okay, it's not great, and they're an expensive brand, so it's kind of hard to go, oh, I love this and <laughs> let's keep going. I do love the brand Booty for all of my undergarments. They're a wonderful company from Australia that makes quality bamboo items. Um, I'll link to them in the description box below. They do not have any wired bras, everything is wire free. However, everything I have ever purchased from them, I have loved. Next up is quality. This was something that surprised me. When I moved to shopping slower and more sustainable, I believed that the clothes would be inherently higher quality. However, they are not, not always anyways. Sometimes, they don't have the quality that they should. And you know, this shouldn't have surprised me because I kept some pieces of fast fashion because I loved the garment. I've had it for a really long time and it's holding up well. So it doesn't necessarily mean that just because it's fast fashion, it's terrible quality and that because it is sustainable or slower fashion that it is amazing quality. I have found this issue specifically with Everlane, the t-shirts that I purchased to try out the brand. The sizing was off, I had to size up, and then the items seemed to be rather thin or not that well constructed, and then they wore out very quickly. After just a few washes, the necklines were stretched out and the fabric just didn't hold up which speaks to me of a bigger issue in the industry. Because this category of clothing is gaining speed and gaining popularity, it doesn't mean that we need to produce more and do it faster, because then we're just right back into that fast fashion model. Quality for me would be the last place that I skipped, you know? I would be making sure that these garments were of the best quality they could be based on their price. I have even found brands I have always loved for quality. Suddenly, the quality has started slipping, and mostly this happened after the pandemic, and I believe this might just be supply chain issues, not really sure. We live in a throwaway society, and fast fashion is just a huge part of that. And if it's not usually cheap in price or quality, it is fast and easy to use and discard. Those clothes can be thrown on, thrown in the washer, thrown in the dryer, thrown on the floor, and when we wear them out, we throw them away. When we embrace slow fashion, we have to slow down the entire process from the purchasing point to the mindfulness of what the garment is made out of, how we will use it and wear it, how we will launder it, and how we will mend it and repair it if it needs it. 
Questions to ask yourself with slower and or sustainable fashion. Is it good quality? Are the seams and hems even and well sewn? Will it serve exactly the purpose you need it for? Will it last a long time? Will you love it for a while? Does the company have excellent return and exchange policies? If they don't, your unwanted items are more likely to end up in the giveaway pile or the landfill. When it comes to longevity, think about the construction of the fabric. What are the laundering requirements? Can you mend and repair it? Are you able to take it in and tailor it? This is very rare in modern clothing as fabric allowance built into the clothing has pretty much disappeared. Also consider the dye and or the color. If you wear a lot of white, can you remove stains from this fabric? If you wear a lot of black, will you be concerned with fading? Fabric and construction matter. 2% elastin or more, that's spandex, is something that you wanna look out for. If you're looking at jeans, for instance, and they have more than 2% elastin, step away because chances are good. One issue will be that you will wear them and throughout the day they will stretch out to the point that you cannot wear them until they are washed and dried again. And that is the elastin stretching out throughout the day. Uh, another issue with garments that have 2% or more elastin in them is that elastin is a plastic and it melts. So when you have those jeans that suddenly have that puckering or look like the fabric is rippled, this is the elastin melting in the garment in the dryer. So it melts in between the cotton fibers and ruins the structure of the garment. So you wanna watch out for garments that have more than 2% elastin. The next thing to look out for is the quality of the weave or the knit. Woven sweaters and knit sweaters, um, the more open that weave or that knit is, is the difference between a great sweater and snags and pulls and tears. You want something that is well woven and well knit very tightly so that the garment lasts longer. Another thing to be mindful of is distressing holes and frays. If you want a garment to last, you don't want too much distressing on it. Jeans might be okay as long as they don't have giant holes in them. Those are not gonna last, we know that. Um, I have a friend that she's giving me a hard time a couple of times because my jeans are, have distressing in them and she's, you know, why would you pay for the holes when you can put them there yourself? <laughs> and I get that, but I also get that there are certain, you know, compromises I have to make to get the jeans that I'm comfortable in and maybe that year's uh, style has a little bit too much distressing in it, but this is one that you want to be careful of. I also, you know, I might buy the distressed pair of jeans and then once that hole kind of opens up and I don't like it anymore, I will sew a piece of fabric behind it and, you know, just make a nice cool patch. You want to avoid frayed and unfinished hems. They usually won't last the season because the more you wash them, the more they fray and the more that hem comes apart. Protecting the longevity of your clothing, no matter the quality of the garment, taking good care of it will help prolong the life. Unfortunately, if you don't factor in the care of the garment, it could be ruined or damaged very quickly. Many of the more sustainable fabrics are often more delicate and require special care. No matter the quality of the garment, even if you're still nurturing a piece of fast fashion, the better you care for it in your laundering practices, the more time you'll have with it. I wash all of my clothes in seventh generation detergent. I use less than is recommended so that I prolong the life of my clothing and my washing machine. I rarely ever buy dry clean only clothing. I simply do not want to take my clothes to the dry cleaner and expose myself to those chemicals when I bring those clothes home. So if I do buy a piece of clothing that is dry clean only, I have a couple of methods of dealing with it. One is spot cleaning. Two is not believing that it is dry clean only. There are certain fabrics that don't need to be dry cleaned only. You can hand wash them and they will be just fine. I'm specifically thinking about some of the polyesters. I remember when polyester really came out in the clothing industry, one of the big selling points of it was that you didn't need to dry clean it. So I'm not really sure when it became a necessity to dry clean polyester, but I digress. One of the things you can do to dry clean your clothing at home is to take a damp towel, throw it in the dryer with a dryer sheet. I use natural dryer sheets from seventh generation. And then I throw the garment in the dryer dry. 
So you put it in with this wet towel and you let it tumble with the dry clothing in there, let it get warm, let it kind of reset the fibers. Um, I take it out, I shake it out, hang it up, and usually that's all I ever need to do. I do have dry clean only clothing and I never go to the dry cleaners. So spot cleaning and using the dryer are perfectly acceptable. Other thing I do is I hang dry all of my shirts specifically and sweaters, unless I'm 100% sure it can make it through the dryer. This prevents pilling, it preserves the structure of the hems, it keeps your clothing from shrinking, which is another issue with sustainable fabrics. They often are more susceptible to shrinkage. Um, this is so much a part of my laundry room that my husband and I installed rods across the ceiling of my laundry room so that I could hang dry all of my clothing. The next thing I have done is embraced using an apron. I might be not caught up on this trend or I might be starting a new trend, I don't know. But I've never worn an apron really unless I was doing some really major cooking, you know, like doing a whole lot of cooking at one time. Um, but I realized I didn't appreciate getting those little oil stains and cooking stains on my nicer clothing. So I have invested in a quality linen apron and I now wear that when I am making dinner so that I protect all of these nicer pieces of clothing. Next is to consider whether or not you will tailor or mend these garments. That will you know, affect the longevity of the garment. I'm okay with sewing on a button or, you know, sewing up a tiny hole, but I'm not that great at tailoring clothing. That's not something I'm really good at. I do know how to use a sewing machine and I have been considering taking a sewing class so that I can learn to take garments in because I think that being able to tailor favorite pieces to fit you is pretty important for the longevity of that clothing. So that is something to consider whether you can mend them and tailor them. Tailoring isn't necessarily something we can do anymore because of that um, issue of not having any allowance in the fabric anymore. But there are certain things like, for instance, if you lose weight and you wanna take a garment in, tailoring can be rather helpful. If you're buying secondhand, tailoring can also be helpful there because you may find something you love, but it doesn't quite fit you correctly. Um, if you can't tailor them yourselves, maybe find somebody that can, a good friend or an actual tailor. Last, give yourself permission to allow for special circumstances. Life happens, illnesses happen, surgery happens, and you will need to find things to help you get through that situation. So, you know, if you have a health condition or a pregnancy or something like that, don't be too hard on yourself. If you have a necessity or a compromise you have to make, to get you through that situation. I had to buy a few things during my recovery that I really just didn't care if I ended up sending them to recycling because it just was something that I needed to get through that situation. And I did find myself feeling kind of like, oh no, don't buy that, it's fast fashion, or no, don't buy that, it's not you know quality made or it won't last forever. And you know, sometimes there's situations where you don't need it to last forever, you just need it to last for this moment. And this doesn't mean that you run to fast fashion for that solution. It just means that that may be your only option and you need to allow yourself to go there. You know, there's also, you know, trends. Sometimes a trend comes up where you love a color or you love a specific idea of a garment or you love a trend that's come back and you wished it would come back and you want one of those pieces and they may not necessarily fall into a slower or sustainable category when you find them, but if you know that it's something you love and you know that it's something you're going to cherish and use it and give it its best life, then give yourself permission to have that thing. This may think, you know, this might be something where you have to think outside of the box if you want to participate in a trend and you may want to, you know, stick to the color or the shape or Try going second hand and seeing if you can um, be involved with that trend that you're in love with without contributing to fast fashion. I hope you found this helpful and as always I will link everything in the description box below. 
Join me on my newsletter so that you can find out when my latest content, including the ebook on slower fashion comes out. That link will also be in the description box below. Please comment, leave your questions and your thoughts in the comment section below. I love that part of my videos. I love discussing my topics with you in the comment section. And while you're down there, if you liked this video and found it helpful, please hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do so now because I would love to see you next time. Until then, shine on.